Part 4. This example illustrates how to use the double integration method to find a deflection equation for a tapered beam. Consider a cantilever beam with a rectangular cross-section that changes size. The height of the rectangle changes linearly from h at the free end to 2h at the fixed end. We want to write the deflection equation for the beam. We know the general equation for deflection, but here moment of inertia i cannot be treated as a constant as it varies with x. So we need to write i as a function of x before we can integrate m over ei. Let's start by defining a height function. I call it h bar. h bar x equals h times 1 plus x over 10. This is a linear function which should give us h when x is 0 and 2h when x is 10. Let's see if the function indeed generates the correct values. So if we substitute 0 for x, we should get h. Check. If we substitute 10 for x, we should get 2h. Check. For a rectangular section, moment of inertia about the axis of bending is 1 over 12 bh cubed. So for this beam, we get i equals 1 over 12 bh cubed times 1 plus x over 10 cubed. Let's refer to 1 over 12 bh cubed as i naught. Then I can write ix equals i naught times 1 plus x over 10 cubed. So what is i naught? It is the moment of inertia of the section at the left end of the beam. The general displacement equation can now be written like this. Let's assume a constant e. Then vx equals 1 over e i naught times the double integral of m over 1 plus x over 10 cubed. Given that we have a downward concentrated load of 1 kN applied at the free end of the beam, the bending moment equation can be written as mx equals negative x. Therefore, the deflection equation becomes, if we integrate the function twice, we get vx equals 1 over ei naught times 5,000 over 10 plus x plus 1,000 times natural log of x plus 10 plus c1x plus c2. To determine the integration constants c1 and c2, we need two boundary conditions. We know that slope and deflection at the fixed support are zero, so we can write theta at 10 equals 0, and v at 10 equals 0. Theta can be obtained by differentiating v with respect to x, that is. So we can write the boundary conditions as Solving these equations for C1 and C2, we get C1 equals negative 75 over 2, and C2 equals negative 2,871. Therefore, the deflection equation can be written as Vx equals 1 over Ei0 times 5,000 over 10 plus x plus 1,000 times natural log of x plus 10 minus 75 over 2 times x minus 2,871. We can now use this equation to calculate deflection in the beam. For example, maximum deflection, which occurs at the free end, can be determined by substituting 0 for x in the deflection equation.